Now, who, listening to that song, got taken back to a time, a place, maybe even a face? Oh, none of you then. <laughs> and would you agree that music does have the power to sort of you know, stir memories into you? Yes. Yeah. Maybe listening to that song you thought of, Sunday afternoon, white bread sandwiches. Yeah. And who's old enough to remember Fussell's condensed milk? <laughs> I'm, showing, oops, I'm showing my age now. Maybe you were listening or watching Adventures of Black Beauty and seeing horses on the telly and thinking, oh, I wonder what it's like to have your own horse. Or maybe none of that, and you just thought of the Lloyds Bank advert and the, the horse there. <laughs> but either way, that song does have the power to ev evoke emotion in this, doesn't it? And for me, that particular song reminds me of the time when I met my childhood sweetheart. Ooh. And can you remember your uh, first love? Yeah. yeah. Well, mine, he wasn't very tall. I mean, after all, we were only 12. And <laughs> he wasn't very tall, as I say. He was dark, he was handsome. And actually, we did have 30 amazing years together. And another woo, please, because... <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, he was my confidant, he was my best friend, shoulder to cry on, and... He really, really helped me get through the childhood. Now, you're probably wondering what on earth I was doing having a relationship at the age of 12. Well, if you haven't already guessed, it wasn't a two-legged one. It was four-legged. As you can see, it wasn't taken very long ago, <laughs> the picture. This is Tiggy. And Tiggy was probably saved my life and was the catalyst of change for me and the trajectory of my life. And... Has anyone heard of equine assisted therapy? Yeah. Yeah. A few of you. Okay, well, 50 years ago, it wasn't, that wasn't what it was called, but he definitely was my therapy and uh, my counsellor. And not only did he save my life and help me get through my childhood, but actually, having those 30 years together, he taught me how to be in relationship, how to give, how to be... Um, yeah, just have a, an amazing relationship. And so that I went on to be able to help many women overcome their things with relationships too. And one of the key things I started with about 30-odd years ago, around, around the 1990s, was something called holistic riding. And initially, it was about helping people overcome their fears of riding. And that came about from dealing with my own stuff, as, as all of our stuff, um, usually our passions in life come from our own stories, don't they? And I remember going to do my, um, they call it BHS stage four exam, and you have to get over three foot six. Well, the problem was, I was terrified to get over one foot six. So there I am having my lessons, and we've got this jump in front of me. No, it wasn't that big. I'm terrified of the horse I'm on. I'm terrified of the instructor because he was like really, really scary. I'm terrified of making um, that, you know, that fool of yourself that you all hate to do because everyone else can do it and no, you can't. And then I clocked the feeling. The knot in my stomach. The dryness in my mouth the heartbeat, and I remembered, or clocked the feeling was the same as I got waiting for my partner to come home. You see, unfortunately, he had the disease of alcoholism, and when he had a drink, it turned him into a very violent alcoholic. And I believe things help direct us in life, and that particular path, that I was led to overcome the fear of him and the relationship it was probably my beginning of my spiritual awakening and spiritual path. And the way that I helped to overcome the fear of him, I thought, oh, I wonder if that work on my riding. Well, sure enough, it did. I got over my three foot six jump 
I did fall off in the flat work in the exam, but we would talk about that over lunch if you like, another story. But I was able to change my life and my relationships and then went on to actually have a relationship of 30 years, not with a horse, but with a lovely man. And I thought, okay, I wonder if this will work for my clients. But at the time, you know, it's like 30 years ago, doing something woo-woo was like really, really woo-woo, you know? And so they all wondered if I was a witch doing all this funny stuff. And I said, yeah, just, there's my broomstick. And as we uh, brought people into the riding school. Anyway, so the thing was, what was, coming, uh, what was coming about was that women were coming to, mainly women, we did have a couple of them, mainly coming to see how to overcome their fear of riding. And always there'd be some other fear that was going on in their life that was a, a parallel. And over the time, what we'd started working on was the fact that even before they'd even got on a horse, they, the horses were already working their magic. They were able to just do something because they're able to read our energy. They, they can see, they see your emotional energy field before they see you physically. And I'd love to sort of really explain lots and lots about that, but come and see us over the stand over lunchtime. And one particular lady came to me and sadly she'd lost her husband to the big sea and was bringing her children riding. And whilst they were riding, we'd often get talking. Now Haley is this beautiful, she would describe herself as Euro-Asian, sort of a mixture of beautiful ethnicities, beautiful black hair, and the smile that will light up a room. Except there was something behind her eyes. So we'd start chatting and say, Haley, I notice you're doing all this for your children, but what are you doing for you? Wendy, there isn't time for me. There isn't money. I've got to put all my efforts into my children. I need to make their life sorted. Now, have you ever done the same, where you put all your things, all your efforts into your children, your job, your partner, and there's nothing left for you, like the phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. Haley, come with me. No, I'm frightened of horses. I'm not going anywhere near that great big horse. Come with me. Anyway. Pablo, even bigger than me, well, that's not difficult, but even bigger, suddenly pulled his head round and pulled her in. Haley rolled up. <sighs> that's what I've missed. I've missed that hug. Since my husband's gone, that reassuring, reassuring hug at the end of the day, that all is going to be well. You see, the thing is, Wendy, I can't do it all. I just feel I'm just overwhelmed at the moment. I'm being chief cook and bottle washer, breadwinner, caretaker, disciplinarian, and even trying to be the nurturer. And I just don't think I'm doing any of it any good. Now, how many of you ladies do so much for everything and everyone else that you still don't feel you're doing a good enough job? Yeah. In fact, actually, Grazia magazine did a poll, and I think it was something like 80% of women don't feel good enough or perfect enough in spite of knocking off 26 things on their to-do list every day. Of course, that's none of you, is it? <laughs> So Haley and I work together, and we'll tell you a bit more about that. But you see, the problem is, when we are using someone, something, our work, our family, our children, our partner, as that source of love, approval, reassurance, validation, what happens when that suddenly goes, you feel like the rug 
has been pulled from underneath you. Have any of you had that experience? So I'm going to invite you to look at our, take a selfie, but before you get your cameras out, I'd like you to just write the letters S-E-L, F-I-E. -I -I -E. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it the phone is there? Because <clears throat> what I want to be able to, oh, it's gone the other way. What's happening is when we use something or someone outside of us, we're giving our power away. We're not standing in our authentic power. We're going to be always at the mercy of whether that person, that job, that situation is there. And when you don't have it, then that's what's going to make you feel anxious. So S is for self-love. Now, what's the problem if you don't have self-love? Well, you'll be in self-attack. You'll be putting yourself down all the time. You won't be charging what you're worth. You'll be finding you attract to relationships that don't serve you very well. There'll be all sorts of things happening when you don't love you. And I know it's cliche to self-love, and but... Literally, you must pour your own self-love pot up first in order to be able to other people to feel your love and to actually be able to receive other people's love. Because never underestimate when you're in self-attack, when you're feeling not worthy, when you don't put yourself first and you're putting yourself at the bottom of the list, the people around you, maybe your kids, your partner, they feel that as well. Your work colleagues. Our energy is always leaking something out. And when you don't love you, you are losing power because you're seeking something or someone outside of you to, to give you that love. So the number one rule for standing in your authentic power is to self-love. Then we have empathy. Now, looking around the room, I can just feel that everybody's really brilliant at empathising with everyone else. Yeah, you're all good at that. Okay. Now, do you find you give yourself the same compassion? Or again, do we stand there with, that's not good enough, that, you should have done that better? How many times do we think, oh, if I hadn't made that mistake, that, that choice, I wouldn't have made that mistake? Now, hindsight, as we know, is 20-20 vision. I'm going to invite you to think of it as kind sight. Look back with love, kindness. You were doing the best you could. The people around you were doing the best you could. Be compassionate and kind to you. Because that's where your power will be. Now, I have to admit, L, I've stolen this one. Live, love, and laugh. Now, I wonder where we've heard that before. So, <laughs> But that is an amazing slogan to live by with the wise women. And if you're not already a member, do come and see a Cheryl and Maz because it's a bleep, bleep, wonderful organisation of supportive women. And are you living? Are you living your purpose? Or are you, are, or are you just existing? Are you loving? So once you've being able to pour the love into you, that's when you can truly love and have the courage to love. Because you're not needing, you're, the, the love that you have now within you truly is able to um, go and spread on the world. And when was the last time you had a good belly laugh? Yeah. Now, I'll tell you some Wendy jokes, but I know I'm getting the eye that I need to hurry up with my um, presentation, so maybe I'll tell you some jokes over lunchtime. Um, <coughs> I've got some really awful ones. <laughs> F is for forgiveness. You were doing the best you could. The people around you were doing the best they could to, with their wounds, their stories, their coping strategies. And so to hang on to that hurt, that resentment, that anger, you're just giving your power away. You are leaking power, and that affects your finances, it affects your health, it affects everything, it affects your business, 
affects the type of clients you have, the type of relationships you draw in. So forgiveness is really important. And start with you. And ultimately, when you really study forgiveness, you'll see that in truth there's nothing really to forgive because everyone and everything, you and everyone were doing the best you could. But if you really want your life to step forward and stand in your authentic power, then I'm not going to try and sing it. Let it go. Let the order. Okay, ready? Let, let it go. Let it go. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody knows the next sentence, do they? <laughs> in, so write down imperfect, please. Okay, now confession time. Who are all the perfectionists in the room? Okay, yeah. Okay, so the ones not with your hands up, are you the ones in the partner in crime of perfectionists, which is the procrastinators? Mm -hmm. Pro or procrastinate, procrastinate waiting, as I call it, which is the art of putting on the pounds whilst putting off the projects. <laughs> I told you I had some awful jokes, didn't I? So procrastination is perfectionism's partner in crime. You're probably putting it off until it's perfect to do it. Now, the problem is perfectionism is a lie. There's no such thing, there's no such time when it's going to be perfect. But I hear you say, I don't want my standards to drop. Try on the word excellence instead. Now, can you feel the energy? If you're working, if you're excelling, and you're working for excellence, can you feel that energy coming up a little bit lighter? Yeah? And the people around you will want to help you excel, and you know, you can encourage people. But now go back to that word perfectionism. It's got to be perfect. Can you feel how the energy drops down? Can you feel that sudden pressure? Now, if you're a boss, <laughs> perfectionist boss, you are a nightmare to work with. Now, you know I mentioned Hayley earlier? Well, <laughs> she will tell you what <laughs> trying to work with someone who's trying to be perf perfect all the time is one I prepared earlier. And Hayley is now doing her live, love and laughing and working with me and as a, my senior equine assisted coach. So there is life after. So... But she'll tell you what a nightmare I can be, because <laughs> I am a recovering perfectionist. Now, it's a great title for a book, isn't it? So what I'd like you to do is just with the I, put a little apostrophe between the I and the M. OK. And now add as I am. I'm perfect as I am. Great name for a title of a book. Breaking free from the prison of perfectionism. Because that fear of judgment that someone you believe that you're not going to be good enough for, or even if it's yourself, is going to keep you stuck. You're giving your power away because you believe you're not good enough, or it's not good enough. So in order to stand in your authentic power, you need to just accept that things are happening perfectly and allow yourself to unfold and become more of who you are but without having this um, addiction to having to be perfect and, and then just not being feeling you're ever going to achieve. Now, who would like a free copy? <laughs> okay, so you'd like to pass it to the lady at the room? Oh, I'm not going to try and get off the stairs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, over the back there. Thank you. I'll sign it over lunch, and if anybody wants some more uh, books there, um, I'll be happy to sign or show you. So finally, I'd like you all to stand up. Okay. So if I'd like you to take your right arm. You might need both hands for this. Okay. Okay, pull here. Left arm here. Okay. Now, the International Women's slogan is embrace. Okay, I want you to embrace yourself. 
my little black beauty was the start of it all. And I'd love to share how you can stand in your authentic power with the type of workshops, with or without a horse, to help you be the best you can be, be and unfold the true person that you are. Thank you. Yeah.